Well, thanks so much for joining us, Brad. Very excited to have you here to talk about your role at Hensel Phelps in supplier diversity and all the amazing things that Hensel Phelps is doing to drive that forward. I want to just start with asking, you've been you know, in this space for 20 plus years. How have you seen supplier diversity evolve um, over that time period? It's, it's evolved quite a bit. Uh, and let, let me correct. Um, I've been with Hensel Phelps for 22 years. Um, and this, I'll share this information because it kind of sets the stage for how uh, we've been successful. And then I'll share how um, supply diversity has changed since I've been in the role. But, you know, I started out in operations. Uh, and the reason why I think that's important is I learned a lot of the skills uh, in the industry that have been uh, applicable to assisting some of our smaller diverse women-owned businesses uh, and, and helping them be successful on not only Hensel Phelps projects, but in the industry as well. Um, so I started out straight out of college with Hensel Phelps, kind of learned the ropes, got a good foundation for the industry, uh, worked my way up to superintendent um, and leadership recognized uh, an ability I had to really relate to business owners, um, as well as, you know, being pretty, pretty good at my role as a superintendent, which Intel managing multiple contractors, you know, uh, working with the client, you know, pushing the work and out in the uh, field and, and getting the job built. Um, so, uh, but I always had a great relationship with our trade partners. So when the opportunity presented itself about, it's been about 10 years now that I've been in the supplier diversity role. Um, and at that time, you know, we didn't even uh, have a title for what we did in supplier diversity. Um, so that's one of the things that has uh, kind of, you know, grown with time is a true recognition of the need for uh, supply diversity professionals that will spend the, the time to really help and assist our small and diverse businesses and prepare them for opportunities with us. But also within our industry, you know, working with some of our you know, older members of our team, some of our younger members of our team to also stress with them the importance of working with smaller diverse businesses. It's not really a, a quota or you know, affirmative action. Those are some of the things that I've heard. It's really about helping prepare the future of the construction industry. Um, just like Hensel Phelps at one time was a small business, right? And someone assisted us along the way to help us get to where we are now. And so I believe supply diversity is just an opportunity to do that today for businesses. So having that approach, having clients that, uh, whether it's in the federal space or your local state municipality projects and clients, they kind of require it. And so that's one of the things that I didn't see in the beginning, and that's clients demanding that their contractors actually engage with the community uh, and set some expectations for the, us as contractors to do just that, give back to the community, uh, and help underserved communities through opportunities, through, through jobs, and also supporting the local contractors in the industry and helping them scale and grow as well. And do you find that the progress that's been made, you know, over the past number of years in the industry, do you feel like that's encouraging? Is it enough? Um, what are your thoughts on just the change that you've seen, let's say, ten years ago to now? Oh, I think it's it's been great. It's been slow. Um, you know, it's, there's a lot of uh, individuals in the industry that still, in my opinion, still don't get it, don't understand the importance of it. Um, but what I have really enjoyed and am and, and proud of is how um, companies like Hensel Phelps uh, truly understand the importance. Um, I think it's a competitive advantage, honestly, uh, because there's still some of our competitors that uh, don't really put the effort or invest in uh, individuals like myself or my team uh, for the betterment of the industry, not just Hensel Phelps and, you know, wooing a client and showing them that by choosing us, uh, you're going to get more than just a job built. You're going to get someone that's going to represent you in the community, um, not just from a workforce perspective, but from a small business uh, women-owned, diverse business perspective of the community in, in the construction industry. So um, I'm really happy with where it is now. And I think we have a, a, a really bright future because more and more clients, um, not just federal, like I said before, but private industry 
are starting to require local business engagement, local community engagement. So I can't wait to see where it goes in another 10 years. Hopefully, maybe I'll be retired by then, but I'm pretty sure that Hensel Phelps will still be at the top because, you know, that's what I strive for every day is us to, to be the best at it. Well, and speaking of being the best at it, you just won at Hensel Phelps, the Associated Builders and Contractors National Diversity Award um, for general contractors. And I believe, first of all, congratulations, but I believe that if I'm correct, you've now won nine out of the past 10 years. Is that correct? Yes, we've won won it nine times. I really believe they should name it after Hensel Phelps, but that's a nice start. No, but yeah, we, um, about three weeks ago, uh, we were awarded the uh, Excellence and Diversity Award for the second time. Um, And a week and a half after that, another large uh, construction industry organization awarded us the Diversity and Excellence Award, and that's AGC. So it's pretty pretty good. That's the first time we won both awards uh, in one year. But the reason why that is so special to me is because it's, uh, that award is, that award is, is, bestowed upon us essentially by our peers. So that's recognition from our peer group of our efforts in the construction industry. Right. Um, so it's, it's very special to us. Now I will say, I'm waiting to hear on the federal award. You know, we've, um, we've pursued oh. the White D. Eisenhower Award that's bestowed upon contractors, uh, large businesses that do well uh, on federal projects with um, engaging and, and exceeding goals from a small business uh, perspective. So we've uh, we've applied for that two times and we've won it twice. And so this will be the third time. Um, but I'm happy to say every time that we've been eligible to apply for it, we've won. So looking forward wow. to that. You know, I call it the trifecta. If we get that this year, um, you, you know, you have to deflate me because I'll be so excited. My head be so big, I'll probably float away. All three in one year. That is, that would be very exciting. Um, well, congratulations again. Thank you. And uh, I just need to poke fun because it is nine out of 10. So I think it's, it was 2019 where, uh, where you lost the winning streak, unfortunately. Uh, How yes. does it, is yes. that a bittersweet moment? I guess uh, I it mean, was, it was, yeah, because it was like, you know, you get complacent a little bit and you think no one, can touch you. And so, uh, you know, to, to, to lose it that one year, it was a kind of an awakening, like, okay, no, we need to get back in the saddle. We need to get refocused. Um, and we've, we've implemented some amazing programs here at Hensel Phelps that, uh, I'm very proud of. And let me first say, this is not just a reflection of me, you know, right. I could, could not do any of the things that, that we've done, uh, from an engagement standpoint without, you know, all of the Hensel Phelps, you know, divisions, all of our people, um, all of our departments, I mean, they all play a vital role in our success. So uh, I just get to walk up there and accept the award, but um, uh, definitely the, the, the effort goes to, to my team as well as our uh, Hensel Phelps project teams. No, I totally agree. And that's, that is so exciting. How does it feel to, to know that you and the Hensel Phelps team are setting the stage for what excellence looks like in, in this space and continuing to push it forward. I feel like that must be really exciting to know that you're part of setting that standard and what hopefully becomes the expectation and the aspiration of others over time, but you really are you know, leading that charge and, and you're kind of out there on the front line you know, setting the example. No, it feels really good. I mean, like I said, it's uh, to to get recognized by your clients, uh, to get recognized by you know the other members in the industry, your, your peers. It feels really good. Um, and also, when you know, you know, your teammate, my teammates may joke with me a little bit. Oh, oh, here he goes again. He won another award, and I always <laughs> say, no, I didn't. We did. You know, but it, mm-hmm. it feels good. Um, also, to be able to. Uh, mentor some of our younger employees who see it but may not necessarily understand like what it took to get there um, so I could sit down and explain to them uh, you know the efforts that it took uh, and what vital uh, role they play in it because a lot of times when you talk about small diverse businesses 
the very first interaction they had with Hensel Phelps outside of myself is usually some of our younger folks on our projects, right? That we're training, getting them ready for leadership positions. Um, so I always encourage them to, you know, treat these trade partners as if it was your family member who, who decided to start a business, right? And it always resonates with them. Um, and I think it, it helps prepare them for what to expect as they grow within their, their roles and responsibilities within Hensel Phelps. No, definitely. And this all resonates so well with me. Um, our company, Bridget, mm -hmm. we're a construction software company, but founded by myself and my business partner, Mallory. So two young females entering the construction tech landscape, which is you know very predominantly uh, male dominated. And I feel like one of the pieces that we've really leveraged in terms of, you know, us in a you know, male dominated space as founders that don't necessarily, you know, fit the typical mold is really just sharing our story and the power of that storytelling has, I think, allowed us to attract such an incredibly diverse team and people from all different backgrounds and experiences. But I really think that has been a core part of, you know, how we've um, shared that is through the different stories and, and making sure that that's communicated. And I know that at Hensel Phelps, it seems like you have a big storytelling component as well. You have the building together um, campaign and yes. just curious to hear a little bit more about what that is and what the impact has been. Oh, it, oh you talk about allowing your people to bring them best selves to work. Um, the way building together is set up is, you know, every Hensel Phelps has eight business units across the United States and each business unit has a, a diversity, equity, inclusion and community form as we like to call it. And the building together campaign was an opportunity for each one of those business units to come up with creative ideas to share what Hensel Phelps is all about. For instance, you know, the different cultures, you know, the different, you know, backgrounds. Um, we've had most recently our um, DEIC form in the Mid-Atlantic District held a, a safe place uh, happy hour and in that happy hour, the very first one we did, you know, was centered, it was in June, so it was centered around Pride Month. And so uh, a lot of, we had very good attendance. Of course, it was virtual um, because at that time we weren't meeting uh, in, in person. Um, but for me, it was a great opportunity to learn more about that community, you know, what it meant to be an ally, you know, what are some of the things that we can do in the community to better support uh, our LGBTQ plus uh, community. So it was, it was eye-opening. I learned so much. And those are the kind of things that are coming forth through our Building Together campaign and our DEIC forums. Uh, that's so very exciting. And I, I could share, like, we could spend the whole interview talking about the things that we've done through Building Together uh, because it's, it's been truly amazing. And uh, I think that is one of the differentiators uh, that we were able to bring forth in our award submissions to show some of the um, the reviewers what we were doing differently at Hensel Phelps. Yeah, I feel like that is such a powerful component and putting that that front and center makes uh, makes so much sense. Stepping away from or just outside of Hensel Phelps, I should say for a minute, um, I feel like I'm bragging about you constantly with all of these amazing things, but you're also the chair of the ABC Diversity committee yes. and curious if you can share with us what are some of the different initiatives or projects that you're working on uh, with ABC that that people should know of oh wow we're, I'm, so we're doing some amazing things I'm, let me tell you ABC is so progressive um, I I really enjoy working with uh, the leadership over there Mike Bellman uh, and and Tia Perry who's an am amazing uh, young lady she's our liaison for our inclusion diversity and equity committee. Uh, but some of the really cool things, initiatives that we're working on, uh, one that's coming up real soon, we have our Inclusion, Diversity, and Equity Summit, uh, where we talk about uh, topics related to inclusion, diversity, and equity. We usually have an amazing guest speaker uh, come out. We have uh, trade partner forums. You know, we talk about, you know, uh, those, those tough conversations like un unconscious bias training, um, things that would be beneficial to ABC leadership, 
ABC members. Uh, we also have, uh, which, which we rolled out last year and is doing very well, our Inclusion, Diversity and Equity um, Academy that we're working on. Um, so, so this, we, we actually, we just finished the framework, I'm sorry. Uh, we started it last year, but the framework has pretty much been developed. Um, but it's going to be a academy uh, that touches on inclusion, diversity, and equity that will be available for all um, ABC members, uh, ABC chapters. And the cool thing about it, the way it's set up is it will meet the chapters where they are. Um, because I'm, as I'm sure you know, there's certain demographics in the United States that are, are a little bit more progressive than others. So those that are really progressive, you know, there'll be some uh, data that they can share to, that we can share or learn at the academy that they can implement. And for those who really don't understand inclusion, diversity, and equity, and they just want to kind of get a, a general understanding of the purpose of it, you know, why it um, makes good business sense, you know, explain the business case for it. You know, we'll have that availability through our training as well. So uh, it's really geared to meet chapters, members where they are and help build their understanding of inclusion, diversity, and equity. Another program we have is the Inclusion, Diversity, and Equity Grant. So if there's a chapter within ABC that wants to implement a id &E committee, um, we had a matching grant up to $10,000 um, wow. that we would provide them along with some support through best practices from award winners like Hensel Phelps and, and other diversity award winners and other chapters that have been successful in the id &E space that we could share with that, that chapter and help them you know, kind of build their um, id and &E committee. Um, and before I jump ahead, we had one really good success story with that. Uh, we have multiple, but one that really stands out, and that was the Houston chapter. Um, they were awarded the grant, um, and through that grant, they were able to bring in over 60 new members to that chapter, um, the majority of them being diverse members, right? So uh, that's just a great example of how that uh, grant and uh, has been uh, a success for ABC, which was initiated by our committee. That's incredible, and I love that you mentioned meeting people where they are at. I feel like that is such an important piece of this. Absolutely. And one thing I wanted to ask you about, which is you know directly related to that, you know Hensel Phelps, Hensel Phelps is leading the charge on a lot of these things. You're at the forefront. But what what do you suggest companies do who aspire to be you know like Hensel Phelps one day, but just aren't there yet? What are some of the you know steps that they can take that are maybe uh, the stepping stones to building something, you know, getting to the significance level of, of Hensel well, Phelps. First and foremost, you, you have to have buy-in from leadership. You know, it has the, you know, the reason we're so successful is because it starts at the very top, you know, with our CEO, Mike Hookie, who truly understands the business case and the human case for, you know, inclusion, diversity, equity, and, and what my supply diversity team does. Uh, for the organization. So um, that's that's the first thing. So there needs to be a, a commitment at the very top, which um, will trickle down, right? As, as you truly understand where your organization is uh, and where your organization wants to be. And then you set those goals and uh, um, aspirations for your organization and start identifying ways to make those goals happen, whether it's you know, attending something like the IDE Academy that I just mentioned, or something else that's being held within it, the industry that will help your organization grow and, and meet the goals that you set for your organization to become more diverse or more equitable or more inclusive, uh, because they're out there. Um, and, you know, we, we actually internally have a um, uh, Suzanne Logan, who's an amazing leader with us. She's our director of organizational development. And so we've had, you know, unconscious bias training. We've had, you know, subtle, subtle acts of exclusion training. You know, we have all kinds of uh, material uh, that we are offering to everyone within our organization because we saw that as a need, right? And so when you're able to identify the areas that you want to focus on to help 
grow your organization from an ID&E space, um, having leadership support that, having someone there to implement it, um, and actually executing it uh, would be the, the place I would say to start. And you mentioned buy-in from the top, from you know CEO or leadership. How important is buy-in from the project teams when it comes to supplier diversity initiatives? Is that something that you focused on early on, or is that something that evolved more so over time? Um, it, you know, when, when leadership is bought in, it's, it's very easy to get the project teams bought in um, because it becomes a part of their, uh, their DNA. It becomes a part of our culture because we talk about it um, not only from my level, but they're hearing it from the very top. And, uh, and then they also have me as a resource to help them get there. So they're so basically they're not in it alone. I guess that's the easiest way to put it. Um, so if there's any struggles, anything they don't understand, they have me to to come in and kind of help support them um, and get the the project where it needs to be. But I would say I, it's been a really long time uh, since I've had a project team uh, or a leader of a project team um, kind of not sure what to do. Right? They it's ingrained in our culture now, but it took a while for us to get there. Um, but it's certainly ingrained in our culture and, and our project leaders, whether it's our project managers, our project superintendents, they all know um, what is expected of them. Um, and they also know they have a resource like myself who's there to, to help, help them along the way. That's incredible. And what I guess my final question for you for the day is ultimately, what does success look like to you in supplier diversity? at Hensel Phelps, um, you know, where, what is that ultimate, that ultimate goalpost? Uh, where it, success for me is, and this is gonna sound <laughs> strange, is when I'm no longer needed. When yeah. inclusion, diversity, and equity is not something that you have to talk about or, or something you have to strive for. It's ingrained into the industry. It's ingrained into these organizations. And they've already, you know, put the pieces in place, the practices in place, the culture in place to already be diverse, right? Already have a, an inclusive culture. Um, and everyone has an equitable stake um, where working with small and diverse businesses is, is understood. Like, you know that a small business is, is not going to be, be able to perform like a large business. Um, once you understand that and you'll go into the relationship knowing that, hey, there's going to be some times where I'm going to need to, to shore this business up, or I might need to have a little bit more communication with this business to truly make them uh, be successful in this job. You know, and most of the time, that's just what it takes. But, you know, success is when, you know, we don't have to have goals on projects for women-owned businesses or you know, veteran-owned businesses or minority-owned businesses, right? Success is with you into your industry and don't have to worry about any forms of exclusion, you know? So to me, that's what, what success will look like uh, is when I no longer have to do what I do on a daily basis. <laughs> I like that goal. I'll that's be out of goal. a job, though. I don't know how... <laughs> No, that is a good goal. I want I want to thank you. I mean, first of all, for taking the time to speak with me and share all of these amazing insights about supplier diversity, the industry, and all of your work with Hensel Phelps. I also want to thank you because we are a woman-owned business and we have absolutely loved working um, and solving problems within the construction industry. We have been doing this for 10 years now. And I know there is obviously still room to improve, but we have been welcomed with open arms um, as a diverse company every single time. And I really can say that that genuinely. And that just is a testament to the progressive nature of the industry and um, all of the, the improvements that are being made. And I know you, know you and Hensel Phelps and the rest of the team are, are leading the charge on that. So thank you because it does um, impact us as well. Oh, great. And I, I say thank you because I, I know it's not easy. Um, and I, I applaud you for being sustainable and, and you know, growing your business. You're, you're obviously a role model. Um, so if there's ever anything that I can do to support you, please let me know. Um, and thank you for the opportunity today. 
No, thank you so much. Have a good day. You too.